Hey, so stay with us now. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing Bill Gates' counsel to Nigerian government, advising us to fix our primary health care sector instead of um, purchasing COVID-19 vaccines. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So we still have Dr. Uh, Kemi with us. Amazing, amazing. People are already loving you on social media. <laughs> and, you know, also quickly, um, Jennifer, you had a question for Dr. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Dr. Kemi. Um, um, my question is, what steps should the government take to improve on the healthcare system, either the primary or the secondary? Okay, great. Um, I'll just go back. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll just go back to the basic principles. For every healthcare system, you need manpower, you need money, you need re material resources. So it's, uh, it's not just about money, but it requires money. Now, um, if I want to give you an example, maybe a bit of an extreme example, the U.S., for instance, spends seventeen percent. Country spends. I mean, who can guess? Maybe you should put that on social media. Who can guess what percentage of our GDP Nigeria spends on health? <laughs> maybe somebody would get that right. But um, let me guess. You, but while you're guessing, uh, it's. It's, 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 okay, maybe I won't give it away exactly, but it's definitely less than 5%. That's worrisome. Now, aside from the fact that it's a small, it's, it's a small proportion of money, a lot of that money goes on salaries. Hmm, hmm. So your guess is as good as mine. Nothing. How much do we have left? to make sure that our system works. Remember, we need manpower, we need money, we need resources. We need resources. Uh, and if you have anybody who has a business, who runs a business, if you are spending 80% of your earnings on salaries, that business is probably not going to do very well. Hmm. That's the problem we have in this country. So there's a whole lot of restructuring that needs to take place. First of all, we need to increase that um, th that uh, the amount, the proportion of um, uh, our GDP that we spend on health. So our healthcare spending needs to go up in line with international best uh, recommend the best recommendations from it, uh, um, nationally and internationally. Secondly, now what do we do with that money? If we spend, even if we spend eighty percent on health, and all that money goes into, uh, it's not me that said it too, but you know how the Nigerian factor can be. <laughs> now, this is not me saying this, <laughs> but um, that's going to be a waste. So we need efficiency in the system. We need efficiency in the system. How do we make that? Um, how do we make healthcare monies count? How do we plug, you know, some of the excesses that are going on in the system? Hmm. Of course, the Nigerian government is trying. They are doing the bits that they can. But there's still a whole lot more that needs to be done. Mm. There's still a whole lot more that needs to be done. And now, okay, I was telling you that we are not spending enough. A lot goes on salaries. Of the remaining money that is left, how much is invested in primary health care? Mm. Those are the questions we should be asking ourselves. Mm. So when you have poor investment in primary health care, that's the same reason why you and I mm, would have a and probably malaria, uncomplicated, and then come to a teaching hospital and say, I'm looking for a specialist to treat my malaria, and that is a waste. <laughs> the specialists have no business treating uncomplicated malaria. A fresh medical doctor who finished school one or two years ago can do that for you for free, happily. So why would, a special, why would you need a specialist to do that? So, so those are the fundamental uh, problems. And um, if we can address those problems, and we can, and we can. One thing I do know is that we might not be where we need to be, but we are not where we were. We must remember that. Mm. We might not be, I mean, for instance, Lagos State has refurbished a whole lot of primary health care centers. Uh, I was in one of the, the model primary health care centers a few years ago, and I was like, wow, I didn't even know this place was this good. So sometimes, you know, some of us might even need to just give the primary health care centers the chance. Go there, 
uh, and um, you know, make up your mind if this is something that you know might be worth your while uh, okay. or not. So I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to try <laughs> to, to visit one of the. I mean, maybe I'll visit the one closest to my house, and let me just see for no, what try, it's worth. Try if you can find it. <laughs> All right, easy. Let's take your comments. Okay, my comment. Okay, uh, there's no name here though. I think it's Uzo. Okay, okay. Uzo says, "Does the medical body?" Have a central... Oh, okay, that's Benson, sorry. Okay. So this is from Benson. He says, um, does the medical body have a central data information unit that gives the statistics of the different illnesses and morality? I, and he said this info should help the government plan the health care, shouldn't it? That's a question. Um, I didn't answer. hear the question. I heard, does the, does the government have a central body for information? But I didn't get what. Okay, does okay, that the gives government, us. does the, let me take it again. Does the medical body have a central data information unit that gives the statistics of different illnesses and morality? Mortality, that's, I think he I wants think to say. I think that's what he yeah. wanted to say. Mortality. And he said, this information should help the government plan the healthcare system. Oh, yes. Oh, we do. We do. Ooh, yeah, we do. We are uh, not where we need to be, but we're not where we were. Okay. That's a capital yes. Nigeria has a very robust, uh, it's, it's called the DHIS, a demographic health information system, where in every state of this country, we get information on priority health illnesses, malaria, tuberculosis, the reasons why people come into hospitals, um, the reasons why people die, and uh, the reasons, you know, so we have a lot of that data coming in. And it's in all the states and all the local governments. Nigerian government has spent a lot of money training people, putting in place computers, and making sure that that system works. And I tell you that system works. Doctor, is this information open to the public, though? Uh, now that's what I don't know. I don't, you know what, you know what they do? We release something called National Demographic Health Survey Reports. That I know is um, data that is collated from these kinds of sources. It's summary data. It's available uh, free for anyone who's interested. Um, but I would imagine that the software is probably restricted access to, you know, yeah. the people who uh, are in who charge. Feed it in, yeah. I don't I, know if the government wants to change that or okay. not. Doctor, I wanted to add a follow-up from Benson. He also asked a question. Yeah. Does the Medical Association make any input on the national health budget? Well, uh, impute. Huh. Now, these are policy issues. Um, well, they're, they're representatives uh, of uh, not just the medical association, many, many representatives, even community-based groups um, that come together to weigh in on many issues that uh, affect health. However, uh, the final decision doesn't rest with uh, one person. Many times it rests with the whatever the federal government decides awesome. to do. And let's remember that um, many sectors are competing for health, uh, are competing for money. Nigeria, uh, the Nigerian government has many, many hungry children. But, but doctor, you know, doctor, so the Minister Kemi. of Finance has a big task. No, but Dr. Yes. Kemi, we know that the, the priority should be health, education, right infrastructure yeah. those are health the priorities education. so i understand we have many hungry yeah. children to feed but what is it not who has life that you can govern it is the people that are alive that you can govern so health mm. should be a priority okay let me take in more comments um jennifer personally i feel health should be number one should be one. number one yeah. because that's the most important thing um there's a comment from uzo he said in all honesty we do not need a bill gates to tell us this we are a country of over 200 million yeah. people. We need adequate healthcare facilities. And there's another comment for you, Dr. Kemi, that says, I love your doctor guests. <laughs> Preventive measures can help Thank us you. become a healthy nation. <laughs> this is from Angela. All right, so Thank my, you, Angela. <laughs> love you too. My doctor, my mother-in-law visits a primary healthcare in Ojodu, Oluwura. It was impressive to see a sound doctor and um, um, an ambience really okay. More needs yeah. to be done to communicate the role of the primary healthcare. Yeah. That's from bio. Then we have Ade, That's good to hear. Ade from the UK. He says, good evening, ladies. 
<laughs> Uncle Gates <laughs> has invested a lot of money to support Nigerian healthcare services in the past. Mm -hmm. My question is, who's managing it and who's monit who monitors this sector on his behalf? A country where we have President's wife going to Dubai for health treatment, including the rich and those in government. Our leaders don't care about us and the country's development. That's, That's some Ade. Then the final one. We get data daily for COVID. Is it, is it the highest cause of death? If not, why are the others with more numbers not displayed like COVID? Like what you said about the uh, mortality rate for mothers, infant mortality, I mean, uh, maternity, how do they call that? Maternal mortality. Maternal mortality. You know, you people in medical sector, I run away from you people. <laughs> Like maternal mortality, mortality and infant <laughs> mortality rates you know those <laughs> rates are really high and we don't get the daily updates like we're getting covid mm -hmm. right people die of they still die of malaria in this country yeah. mm -hmm. you know so yeah. I, I i don't know how we're going to do this but if you had one thing to say in um for because we want to go back again to the primary health sector what do you think yeah. are, the, are the biggest thing do you say that um if we want to do like quick fixes right now um are we good on infrastructure can we manage what we have on ground or we still need to invest more on infrastructure for the primary health sectors? Um, thanks. Thanks. A lot of questions, a lot of good comments. You know, I'm really glad that somebody said that he or she went to a primary health care center. Yeah and was happy now a lot of us you know have um haven't even given the primary health care centers a chance you know and then maybe if that if that's one thing that we might get uh out of uh, having this conversation is i mean we're not saying we're not forcing you to go there but give it a try L uh, check your uh, local government i'm sure there's a ph the pr a primary health care center around you try it uh, you might just be pleasantly surprised, like the gentleman who uh, said his mother, uh, mother in law, visited. Yeah. So, in terms of quick fixes, what do we need to do? Um, I think the government is doing something. Like I said, the primary healthcare centers are way better than they were, uh, not quite where they need to be. So, of course, we still need continuous investment and also making sure that the funds that are invested are properly utilized and managed. Mm. Yes. So, it's really no point putting in a Whole lot of money if that money is improperly utilized and managed many of the phcs in lagos i can tell you have doctors they have trained doctors mm. uh they have trained nurses so they have a good team on ground mm. they have a good team on ground uh the team is usually they're very supportive ready to work you know they're they're, they're, they're good to be yeah, they're, they're good you'll be happy you know at least with manpower so i think with manpower to a large extent okay. in the urban areas ah let me mention this <laughs> in, the urban areas, way better. in the rural areas oh i remember when i, I did uh, i had to uh, go to some in this same lagos so we had to go by boat to one far place i can't remember the name of the village in this same lagos and then of course as expected the primary health care center there was underutilized, understaffed, you know, and other things like that. So, so there are some issues. Um, of course, in the urban areas were definitely doing better for. Okay, doctor, before we, you, you have a question, right? Okay, quickly. I want okay, to ask doctor. something about COVID. <laughs> Okay, um, now talking about the um, talking about the health personnel at the um, primary health care centers, do you think that there is more that can be done in terms of their skills? Because I feel like one of the reasons why people hardly use the primary health care um, system or sector is because they are scared. They feel like um, they are not well trained or they cannot deliver on what they are supposed to do. That's a perception. Oh, thanks. Um, le yes, let me quickly say this. I think that's not just a perception. I think it's a wrong perception. Mm. Now, let's remember, 80% of the common illnesses can be adequately treated at the primary health care. You don't need a super specialist brain surgeon to tell you that your headache is due to malaria. Mm. Take a, a coatemo and an ACT, take Panadol, mm. and you'll be fine in a couple of days. Mm. You don't need a super uh, uh, highly trained um, um, brain surgeon to do that. But you need a well-trained doctor who has gone to medical school for at least six years, who has done at least one year of house job, 
Mm. And at least what well, this is eight years of training. It's not a joke oh, to spend eight years in medical school, <laughs> not in medical school, <laughs> at least studying medicine. And we and we spend so much more uh, time. And then the other thing you need to remember, and I can speak for Lagos State, is they continually train their staff. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the other states, but I do know that Lagos State on continually trains their staff. So um, I would say give it a try. Give it a try. I, I, if I'm going to say something to all our viewers out here, give it a try. Make up your mind. Okay. Uh, you might be really pleasantly surprised. Okay. And doctor. that would be good for Nigeria because we do have under underutilization. Doctor, we thought we were going to yank you off at 8.50, but we're having so much fun. <laughs> because you have to go back <laughs> yeah, to your busy it's schedule. Nice talking. Yeah, to you. We, because you have to go back to your busy schedule. Can you keep this answer a bit short? COVID 19, we want to go back to the topic, right? Do we truly need vaccines based on how far you have treated, you know, people? you know, dealing with COVID, do we truly need vaccines? Because I hear some people are taking some kinds of medication that is boosting their immunity and all of that. Yeah. Do we really need this vaccine? Is it really? Because 400 billion, it's not a it's joke. A lot of money. It's mm. not a joke. It yes, will do so much in the healthcare sector. So do we really need to have these vaccines? Well, you know, what I would just say is as with anybody, I mean, if for instance, you're trying to decide, do I spend money on clothes, shoes, bags, uh, do I spend money on? And so you have to ask yourself, what is the greatest need? Hmm. Uh, now, let us put it in perspective. COVID-19 is a need. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I wouldn't say that COVID isn't a need. It's a legitimate health care need. Hmm. It is killing people. It is overwhelming our health care system. It is a need. Hmm. However, comparatively, to others, comparatively, the question is, if we had that amount of money, is that what we should spend it on? And I think that's the way we should look at it. Mm. So we definitely need the vaccines. We can't, we can't take that away. But then considering the fact that we don't have so much money, healthcare spending is poor, there's so many other diseases, and then there's a healthcare system that needs that money. Mm? Mm. And there's a healthcare system that if we invested that money in, we would, we would save lives, maybe even more lives than COVID. I don't have the data, maybe. Mm -hmm. So then the question then becomes, how do we weigh that? How yeah. do we weigh that? Okay. So I'll leave that. Yeah, so that's, Are I we guess, squeeze my in final... one last question quickly? <laughs> oh. <laughs> my director said no. <laughs> but thank you so much. So, Doctor, if you wanted to just allay the fears of fears of them, um, people in like in the minute you know how do you encourage people you know to go about um, COVID-19 you know handling it in Nigeria um well one thing we know is that uh well COVID-19 uh is here with us but the preventive measures work they, they really do work and they work better if we all do them okay so let's remember that there's really no pandemic in the world that stays on uh in a high forever um the 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 the, the acute challenges that we have with covid 19 after a while they're going to go down we're hoping and praying another one doesn't come in but for now it will go down mm. so let's remember that this is hopefully uh a time limited thing let's try to adhere to the ncdc covid 19 protocols let's try to do what we can to stay alive mm. keep ourselves and our loved ones healthy while we are riding through this storm. Absolutely. And let's remember that one day, this mm -hmm. storm, this too shall pass. It, it will pass. pass. Thank you so yeah. much, Dr. Kemi. You've been an amazing guest. We hope to bring Thank you again. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Ah, thank you, ladies. Yeah. Thank we you. have run out of time. The director is in my ears. <laughs> All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inspire, inform, influence lives towards action. And this year, we're starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. Now, if you are a company and you have internship slots that you can give to us, please partner with us, allocate some slots to us. And if you are a job seeker, keep watching Waze. Follow us on all our social media platforms as this will be an all-year-round engagement. And also tell your friends to keep their eyes on Waze. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again truly affordable but high quality healthcare tools and services are the only means by which quality healthcare can be provided to all i mean the doctor has said this in multiple times throughout the course of the show so you would understand that it is not negotiable we have to invest in our primary healthcare sector now we'll see you live tomorrow 
at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy. <laughs>